Hey guys, welcome back to DeFi Top Signal. I am your host, Abs, and I'm with my co-host, Drake. What's up, Drake? Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, I mean, <laughs> Abs. What's up, man? What we it's got? A... What we got on tap today? Actually, oh. a lot of happening, guys. We we've been away for like what five days, six days. Yeah, yeah, lots has sound, happened. Man. We have we have basically sushi exploit. We wanted to talk about Stacks ecosystem, Alex token. Uh, the POW there, uh, oh, sorry, POW uh, update, uh, the ZK Sync, Kanto, Kava, and Metis. And I think we're just probably going to round it out with NFTs, of course. Um, so the first thing we kind of wanted to talk about was the, the Sushi uh, swap exploit. Now, the, they were hacked around, I think it was around 1,800 ETH, which uh, equates out to be around 3.3 million dollars uh, that was basically hacked from the Sifu himself um it's it's a lot of money what do you think about that drake <laughs> dude it's a ton of cash um I, I think it's the this is like the biggest testament um i i was actually looking into it a little bit uh basically what the issue was is when it's uh, how uniswap works is when whenever you are um making a swap the tokens are actually sent to you and then you send out the tokens so what happens is people well, SushiSwap is basically a fork of Uni, and fake tokens were being sent, and then the real tokens were being sent out. So when you auto-approve on um, a lot of these different DEXs, uh, and you do like the infinite approve, it's basically just doing like, uh, it, it's basically picking up pennies in front of a freight train. Um, the best thing to do is just auto-approve or approve how much you're actually making at that point in time, that actual swap, just to be on the safe side. Because there, there are going to be more exploits similar to this. Um, being that Uniswap, they created the code and that was something that they knew how it functioned and how it worked. And then SushiSwap just forked it like, hey, look, we want to vamp. We didn't create this. So they don't really fully understand the code um, that they're forking. They just fork it because, hey, they've seen it work. Um, so this is just something to keep in mind with a lot of these different DEXs. There are several of them out there that just fork code and not know what they're doing just be careful okay. doing the infinite approved um just because that happened to sifu doesn't mean it won't happen to you uh, i've seen a lot of uh accounts on twitter that saying yeah look i, I basically got rugged too i woke up uh and i had approved a uh, token uh, because i was getting ready to go ahead and swap it and i went to bed woke up and i was planning on taking profits and tokens were gone yeah so i wanted to read a quick um I'm just kind of pull it up here. Okay, a quick little excerpt from an article I found. Um, so basically, exactly what you said, Drake. Um, 3.3 million in crypto that was reportedly stolen from the popular decentralized uh, exchange with SushiSwap. Um, it was basically a bug in the protocol trading routing smarting, uh, smart contract on uh, on Sunday, and which was the 9th of, of April. Now... 300, I'm not sure you heard of this, Drake, but 300 ETH was recovered. And this uh, article was actually six hours ago. So uh, oh, nice. three, 300 ETH is around half a million dollars. So they have a long way to go. It's a, it's, it's a nice chunk, though, to get back. But um, yeah, it looks like they're, they're kind of just kind of going back to take a look at what's going on. And, and um, it's, it's a lot of money, I have to say. I mean, it's... 300 ETH <laughs> that was recovered, though. How were they um, able to recover it? So it says right here that shortly after the exploit, the first hacker returned about 90 ETH uh, of the 100 stolen. And let's see here. I, I think it was... Uh, so Gray, Jared Gray confirmed he's the head developer of Sushi Swap. Uh, the affected contract, quote-unquote, router processor 2 had a transaction approval related bug that hackers exploited to drain the funds. Gray also stated in a separate tweet that the bulk of the exploited funds came from a single user. Blockchain security platform PeckShield identified the user as Sifu, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't... So Gray confirmed a recovery of over 300 ETH and 700 ETH from Lido. Uh, we secured a large portion, this is quote unquote, we secured, secured a large portion of our affected funds in a white hat security process. Uh, we've confirmed recovery of more than 300 ETH from Coffee Babe of Sifu's stolen funds. 
we're in contra uh, contact with Lido's team regarding the 700 more ETH. So hopefully, it looks like here they potentially could get some more ETH back. All right. Okay. Yeah, good for them. I hope it works out, right? Because this obviously every single hack that that occurs in this space is just a, a loss, a net loss for. Uh, for, yeah, for I'm pretty sure space. that was the whole reason, not for the dump this weekend, but like the. Uh, it was it was a negative weekend. Um, normally, Bitcoin does some better stuff, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, you have uh, basically weekend price action is very very scammy. It can go back you know, upwards, sideways, wazzy woozy. So, um, but yeah, that's that's really the the biggest update as of uh, yesterday, which is the ninth of today. So, um, it's really sad stuff. But I'm looking like they're taking some 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 nice measurements to to recover some of their funds. Yeah, and if you made a approval or a um, approved transaction on SushiSwap, it was it's actually more so for people who recently uh, transacted. So if you haven't been using DeFi or crypto or even swapping on Sushi for the past few weeks, you're you're fine. Um, but worst case scenario, uh, I retweeted a um, little approval uh, checker tool that you guys can use. That's from DeFi Llama. Uh, make sure you guys use that. It'll tell you if you have that approval recently, and it'll allow you to reject that approval uh, or uh, revoke that token approval. That way, if you haven't gotten rugged yet, <laughs> you can prevent that. Yeah. So there's like many, like there's multiple ways to to do that. I did it a different route. Um, what I did was that I logged in yesterday after <laughs> after I heard what happened. Um, I've used Sushi Swap many times in the past, but. I haven't been in the past like month or two, but what I did was that I went to revoke.cash and connected my wallet and uh, just revoked everything that I was seeing, you know, across the board when it comes to uh, sushi. So that was uh, what I did yesterday. So it took me about, you know, 20 minutes of just kind of carefully going through. My funds were all safe and, uh, and you know, lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> I was looking out, man. That's how it rolls. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hopefully they recover from this and we can kind of get more safety measures in place. But obviously this is, you know, DeFi has been three, you know, open for three years now. It's, it's super experimental, obviously, you know. Um, so make sure that you take proper, uh, you know, care of your funds. And uh, I would, I mean, as a safety measure, I, I think that it's fair to say that when you're using MetaMask and you're using these uh, Web3 wallets, the best thing to do is that at the end of the week or end of the, the day, Make sure you take a an extra precautionary safety measure to disconnect your connected sites, uh, the ones that are either shady or whatever it is. You want to kind of check this website to check the APRs really quick. Okay, great, but I would definitely disconnect right away and uh, basically move on to the next. Uh, but make sure that's a safety practice. I mean, I used I do that potentially, you know, every every week, uh, but I did it a lot yesterday just because you know it's it's good and bad to have these. Um, these hacks happen because it kind of tightens our awareness to the space. Uh, I'm not sure how many times you, you know, you revoke access to these websites, Drake, but um, you know, every single time that there's a hack out there, that's kind of massive. It's big. I, I, I basically that same exact day, it just kind of taps me on the shoulder and say, Hey, I need to be more careful. And I go be basically do like a, a, a the thorough sweep and revoke, revoke, revoke every single website that I don't, you know, use. So it's a good, uh, it's a good spring cleaning. Yeah, it's good practice. I agree, um, mm -hmm. especially on like the lower gas fee chains. It's just a no-brainer. Uh, mm -hmm. Something to help prevent that in advance is just uh, kind of doing the approvals just based on what you need. Uh, that way, yeah. you aren't the infinite approval. Um, or better yet, just don't keep anything in your wallet. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, just it, it sounds kind of weird, but if it's deployed in like a smart contract, if it's not in your wallet, it can't rug. I mean, sure, you do have external risk of like um, if it's in a DeFi protocol or whatnot, um, the chance that the protocol is exploited. But what you could also do is if you get this token or you fill up a bunch of tokens in this wallet and it's on a low gas fee chain, just send it to a wallet that you don't ever transact on it. So like mm -hmm. it never makes approvals on different websites. It's literally just a, uh, a black hole and you just send tokens there. And if you ever want to sell, you send the tokens out send it to the hot wallet that, that tends to do all the approvals and transactions, whatever, and then just sell them. It's an extra step. It's an extra gas fee, but it actually saves you um, a lot of chaos that can happen. So like, for, me personally, I actually have, for me personally, I actually have three different wallets. 
I have a um, cold storage. So this is basically like my savings. I just throw it in there. This doesn't touch anything. It's just there. Uh, this is usually with a ledger and mine is with a ledger. Uh, the second is you're going to have a hot wallet. This one is more so like for your DGEN, uh, DeFi, playing around, um, making different transactions, doing this thing. It's not going to be as big as the savings wallets, but it'll be um, large enough to where you're able to play around in DeFi. And if it does get lost, it's not going to break the bank. And then a third one um, for a airdrop wallet. This is basically the wallet that you use just to interact with different websites, just play around with them, play around with the quote unquote sketchy websites you've never seen and potentially airdrop farm or uh, test these different dApps. And that way if the wallet is rugged, it's like five bucks. Who cares? Yep. Yep. Definitely agree with that. Let's so, talk about some liquidity flows. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I'm looking at these charts and most of the liquidity has been flowing into Z, uh, okay, like not dollar for dollar, it hasn't been flowing to ZK, but ZK era, um, ZK sync era, they're almost up to $100 million in TVL now. Uh, they've been climbing, they actually, since the beginning of April, they've tripled, almost tripled in TVL. So in a matter of 10 days, they tripled in TVL, which is massive. And the protocols that are getting some love from this, are SyncSwap, Velocore, and Mute. So Velocore is a VE33 DEX that launched a couple of days ago and way oversold on um, its ETH. It actually sold out in like 15 minutes and uh, it was oversubscribed. I, I can't remember how much, but it was like, I don't know, they wanted to raise 450 ETH and they ended up raising like, I don't know, it was like 2000 or some crazy number. I can't even remember what it was, but TLDR, it was overhyped, not overhyped, but there was a lot of hype behind it. A lot of people subscribed to it and the token uh, after it launched, whatever, of course you had that inevitable dump. It dumped down to as low as about five cents, but it's been skyrocketing since then. It's already at 21 cents within a matter of four days, five days. So it's doing extremely well. Uh, I wrote a thread on this if you want to check it out on Twitter. But TLDR, it's a VE33 DEX, and you got a lot of liquidity flowing into uh, the ZK Sync ecosystem. So when you have liquidity flowing in, not having to compete with concentrated liquidity, it equals bullish for the VE33 DEX uh, because it provides a better alternative and solution for the current DEXs on the space. And on top of that, it's already uh, offering the cheapest fees between wrapped ETH and USDC, and it doesn't even have the aggregator integration yet. And so, uh, yeah, that's really interesting, man. It's so didn't didn't they confirm the team at, at ZK Sync to confirm that this time next year it's going to take around a year for their airdrop? Is that how it's working? I have no idea. Worst case scenario, playing around with this, uh, at least if it does get wrecked or gets rugged, whatever, at least we'll get an airdrop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yep. So it's but, it's really just coffee money playing around with. <laughs> yeah, I think I uh, I think I moved over like fifty dollars just to kind of play this and play that. Not a boy. Uh, yeah, it's drop farmer. <laughs> trying to, <laughs> um, and I think a lot of folks are trying to as well. So might as well. I mean, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. Um, so I think I, I wanted to talk about the the stacks ecosystem really briefly. There's really it, it's kind of moving sideways. It's it's consolidating uh, pretty nicely. TVL is currently at 26 million. The Alex dominance is still above 90 percent. This is very bullish, right? Alex it's... is number one DAP on there. It's it's holding around 24.3 million dollars. Uh, the next one after that is uh, Arca Deco, and basically that one has like one point eight million in TVL. So th the the gap there is is kind of widening and. Um, it's very bullish for Alex. Obviously, we talked about this in the past uh, few episodes. Alex is a... Uh, uh, I'm very, very bullish on Alex. I think Alex is going to probably dance circles around stacks in terms of the performance and percentage gains uh, down the line. And I I wanted to say that, uh, you know, Alex is... What is it? At $0.09. Cents. The team is, you know, very strong. The investors, again, I think the one that stuck out for me was Gemini. There's a lot of other investors as well, but th 
the the one bullish thing I kind of wanted to say about Alex is that Alex is uh, set to be listed on a centralized exchange. I believe, and I could be wrong, but this is probably a big, big exchange that uh, I'm looking. Hotbit. Okay, so Hotbit. It's on Hotbit right now. It's really not that much volume going on over there because it's Hotbit, but Hotbit. <laughs> um, and so Mex, it's an exchange somehow. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I th- so the volume is really low on that Hotbit exchange, but <laughs> Now Mexi is going to be listing Alex, and that is um, going to list on. And it's confirmed on April the seventeenth at two p.m. UTC. Um, this is very bullish for Alex. I think that this is. They went straight for the second tier. Literally, it's it's mass. This is massive news to me. Alex, sorry, Alex being on a Mexi uh, exchange. That's basically having over a billion dollars of twenty-four hour volume. That's going to speak volumes about Alex, right? So I can see Alex, you know, being picked up for from here on out as soon as the, it gets listed on MEXC. So very bullish on Alex. What about uh, what about you? Are you bullish on Alex? I like Alex. I like Deco. Uh, I only picked up Deco, and I'm just holding stacks. Um, but yeah, I should probably grab a bag, bag of Alex just in case. Um, I think it's going to do extremely well, especially the dominance that it has. I mean, Stinkin has 92%. Uh, it seems like it's going to get most of the love um, if uh, Stacks does. Then my thesis behind Deco is that, like, how much more movement can Alex... Uh, obviously, if, if Stacks explodes and grows, great. Um, Alex is going to get some love from that. But it already owns 92% dominance. Uh, the upside on it is, I mean, all of it. <laughs> and the, the downside is, well, the other 92%. Deco, the downside is, well, it owns like a million, whatever. It goes to zero. Uh, but if it goes up, I mean, theoretically, to match, let's say it matches Alex's dominance, it's at least a 20x TVL-wise. That's, that was my thesis on the risk to reward on it. Um, I'm like Stacks is already uh, for me at least uh, degen enough, even though it's Bitcoin DeFi. Um, but I mean, yeah, Alex is probably the uh, the play to go. It's 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 almost like um, what was an example? It was almost like quick swap with Polygon. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if you heard of the first Doge meme coin on on Bitcoin Layer. Have you heard about that one? It's called no, Welsh. I'm not messing with it. <laughs> I got mine. Uh, mine was uh, ZK Doge, ZK. and it did and it did good as long as you sold it on the pump. And it's, it's like whatever now. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a lot of uh, you know. Hopefully this, hopefully the upgrade is going to be soon rather than later. But uh, obviously this is going to be a slow churn for the the stacks ecosystem. Um, I'm expecting big, huge gains. You know, during the bull cycle, and uh, I, I'm I'm seeing glimpses that we are potentially getting into a bull cycle but it has to break a another major area which is around 32 33,000 in terms of BTC price. I think if that breaks above that then we could p- probably see some fireworks. Um so more yeah. coming there. Yeah, that would be nice instead of this PVP battle. Um right now it's just a matter of looking at where the liquidity is flowing right now and seeing where the plays are. Like right mm-hmm. now we're seeing some more flows into Canto, Kava, um, as well as, well, I mean, already mentioned ZK Sync. ZK Sync is already getting some love, but Kanto Kava and mm, kind of Metis. Um, Metis is going to follow uh, somewhat of the ZK narrative. They're rolling out their own form of that. Um, but Kanto, uh, a couple of plays on that. My favorite one is really just Velocimeter. Um, there are a couple of other ones on there, like. I mean, I'm not even looking at it, but you got a meme coin, Kanto Inu. Um, just be careful with meme coins. Uh, you got the Kanto Dex, Kanto uh, Lending, you got Beefy Finance. Really, the only, in my opinion, in the best play on there is going to be Velocimeter. Um, I like the guys behind it. Caesar's behind that. He's a YouTuber. Uh, it's a VE33 Dex over there, and it actually found somewhat of a nice floor, uh, and it seems to be holding up extremely well. Um, it actually, in the past three or four days, it actually did a 3x already. Um, yeah, flow 27 
or 0.27. Yeah, it's doing extremely well. Um, I like the VE3-3 DEXs, and it's not dealing with concentrated liquidity over there. Um, and I, I think it's going to be able to uh, capture a meaningful amount of TVL. Uh, also over on Kava, um, again, you have that liquidity mining incentive from the Kava ecosystem coming to share and basically um, bring in TVL by, uh, uh, you can call it bribes if you want to, um, but basically paying people to use the chain. Um, in my opinion, that's just bullish. You, you can't you can't beat 750 million in uh, incentives. It's it's huge. And Mare uh, and Equilibre, uh, I think they was they just got like 144 mil, um, or I'm sorry, 144,000 Kava tokens this month. So here's the sauce on Mare. Mare is basically just it's pumping right now. Um, but Mare, they just they they like to throw out some cash. They did a 72 thousand dollar bribe this week on uh, Equilibre. Uh, basically, in my opinion, you can look at it like this. You have Equilibre, a VE33 DEX, it's going to get love, it's probably gonna play out the same thing as uh, Velodrum did on Optimism, especially with the incentives that they're able to give out. And being that they're uh, the only and main VE33 DEX, and really the only DEX in general on uh, the Kava EVM, yeah, you have some others like uh, Surf Dex or whatever, um, but it's like nothing. There's no TVL over there. You also have Curve. Uh, there's basically like no TVL over there. I mean, yeah, you got like 13 mil, but it's not really like a native Dex. So in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. The two that matter are going to be Mare and Equilibre. They do have a couple of other lending protocols coming up like Torius Finance and uh, Jam. Finance, it's basically like a geist fork. And if you're staking on Equilibre, you're basically going to get an airdrop of their token. Um, but the TLDR is Mare. Uh, you can look at it as reflexive to Equilibre as well as uh, somewhat of a multiplier. So as long as Equilibre stays uh, consistent in price or at least increases a little bit, I see Mare doing multiples, uh, being that it basically owns Equilibre because they're bribing the mess out of it and they, they're basically getting all the liquidity on there. Um, and that's just based on the amount of uh, the size of the bribes that they're doing. They're doing $72,000. I mean, why would you uh, vote for anything else? It's, it's just dumb if you're a, okay, I'm sorry. It's not dumb, but you, you aren't uh, going to be earning the most if you aren't vote, voting for uh, mayor. And, you're basically going to get all the votes, all the liquidity, because most of the rewards are going to be going to those pools. And then again, I see Equilibre playing out similar to Velodrome because they're able to subsidize these um, the uh, staking by paying people to stake. Like right now, um, for for if you stake 165 Vara tokens, you're basically getting paid like I don't know, 14 bucks, 15 bucks. Last week was um, so basically 165 there. Or Vara is like, I don't know, 25 bucks. So you're basically getting $14 cash back. Um, so Wait, you're so basically getting paid to stake and you also get airdrops coming up too. So it's like a win-win. It's like, why? Why not? I do have a, I do have a question for you, man. Um, so I had a friend that was uh, kind of questioning about bribes and... I said that. Listen, I might bring this up on the next, you know, uh, the next, ep, you know, podcast, and okay. I wanted to talk to you about if you can just dumb it down in terms of, you know, uh, a few sentences. What is a bribe and how does it work? Do with the mayor price appreciation is now ninety thousand dollars on their bribe. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so okay, so go on Equilibre and you look at these voting APRs. So if I vote for mayor. I'm going to get a 563% APR. So this means if I have, um, let's call it $100 uh, in uh, $100 of uh, stake fare or VARA, um, I'm going to be getting a 563% APR distributed over the year if I vote to that pool. So let's break down the $100. Uh, so 563. So basically, it's just going to be 563 bucks. Three divided by 52. So that means we're basically getting paid 10 bucks. So if I vote on that pool, I'm going to get almost 11 bucks, actually $10.82. So if I vote on that pool, and I only have $100 in VARA, 
I'm going to be earning $11 for voting for their pool. That's basically I ROI um, in less than, I mean, it's, it's going to be less than 10 weeks. It's so going to be like nine weeks. So, so you basically, you're basically get your money back. Mm -hmm. So you basically get your money back voting on mayor uh, if, in 11 weeks, as long as the prices stay the same, obviously. If they increase, it pays off quicker. If it dumps, it, it pays off slower. But their voting APR is 563%, um, just based on the amount of bribes. The, their, the total value of the bribe is like $90,000 now. And the second one is four thousand dollars. It's it's peanuts compared to it. So they have mayor has twenty five percent of the equilibrium votes. So of the emissions, twenty five percent of them is actually going to uh, mayor and USDC. Well, it's not twenty five percent of all of them. It's twenty five percent of the allocation that they have because um, in in the uh, code or in the uh, in the white paper you can see it. Uh, they automatically uh, set aside a certain percent of the bribes or the votes, similar to what Curve does, that goes to the core pools. That way, their token doesn't like lose all of its liquidity. But basically, it has the highest APR. And how bribes work is uh, Velodrome did a, um, a comparison tool with this to explain how it works. But basically, for every dollar... People were like the Optimism Foundation for every dollar in OP token that they gave to uh, Velodrome, they were able to bring in $7 or $8 in liquidity. How big is that? It's huge. Normally, you're lucky if it's $1 um, in rewards for $1 in liquidity. That's if you're lucky. Normally, it um, brings out much less than that because uh, a lot of these protocols are basically paying just to get liquidity, whereas with bribes, and this is why you see protocols like FBOM coming out, or you see protocols like Taro, uh, MyFinance, uh, a lot of these different protocols taking advantage of the bribes because they're basically driving revenue from uh, using these DEXs because they're actually getting, not they're not getting paid, but they're getting deeper liquidity and that, that's what they're needing for their protocol. They, they aren't physically getting paid but they're saving money from what they would have done anyways so in theory you can look at it like they're getting paid so if i have to drive a thousand dollars of liquidity and if i do it myself it'll cost me a thousand dollars or if i go with a ve33 dex it costs me three hundred dollars i'm basically getting paid 700 bucks because i'm saving that money does that make sense mm, it does make sense yes because all these protocols have to have liquidity not all of them but yeah, uh, DeFi, yeah, all of the DeFi protocols actually do have to have liquidity. So I take that back. All of them do. Liquidity is king. It doesn't matter what it is. It, if there's no liquidity, people can't sell. Um, unless you have like a, a token similar to like uh, LGO on level finance, so where it's just for redemptions of the treasury. Phenomenal. Thanks for that overview, man. My bad. I kind of went long. Um, no. No, it's good. It's good. It, it needs, I mean, so there's just uh, a lot of terminology that folks, you know, getting into DeFi, they don't know what it is. And it's like new tech, concentrated liquidity is kind of new. Bribes are new. And, I didn't even uh, talk about Metis yet. Oh, yeah, you did. You said, oh, you could. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Um, but Metis, okay. Metis follows the ZK EVM narrative. Uh, some of the plays over at Metis that I'm looking at. Uh, and this one kind of already pumped. Um, I was in earlier. This was in the previous pump. Um, what was the previous pump? Like December? I don't know. Uh, there was a previous pump uh, right before it. And uh, I just like the narrative of Vitalik. And I faded it back in 2020 or 2021. And I'm like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> so I was like, I had to get some Metis. So I got some Metis. I got uh, Hermes. And I got some Maya. I wrote a, and Tevis. I wrote a thread um, explaining each of these, but Maya is like a reserve currency, uh, like Olympus DAO, but those guys are one of, uh, in my opinion, one of the uh, most active DAOs. They do like a, I think it's a weekly or bi-weekly AMA, just giving updates with their protocol, and they're actually pretty transparent with their treasury, and if you take a look at Maya DAO on DeFi Llama, their treasury is steadily increasing. Uh, they are no longer um, emitting their token, so it's basically reached their cap. And they own a huge portion of Hermes, which is a VE33 DEX that's over on uh, Metis. These guys are coming over to Arbitrum as well. 
you guys can check out the full thread I made on Twitter. But TLDR, the seven reasons why I'm bullish on Maya, is one, the DAO owns a suite of different DeFi protocols that drive back revenue to token holders, which is the Maya token. Um, they also own their own uh, concentrated liquidity management uh, service called Talos Omnichain. Um, so it's also in the concentrated liquidity. They own Ulysses. It's basically an omnichain liquidity protocol solving the problem of fragmented liquidity. And of course, they own Hermes, basically, the 3 3 DEX. Second is uh, the yield is real yield. So token emissions have stopped and all the yield is coming from um, the protocols that they have. Uh, and then you also have Aave as a catalyst coming over to Metis. Fourth or third, it's decentralized. It's 100% community owned. They have no team tokens, no seed, no private sale, no public sale, and no marketing. 100% community owned. Fourth has one of the best communities and team in the space, in my opinion. Like I said, weekly AMA. Um, massive war chest uh, for between both the Treasury and the Dow. Uh, they have about, I don't know, $8 million or almost $8 million. Um, and you can see their uh, Treasury is rising over time. Six is the Dow is currently only on Metis. Again, it's deploying to um, Arbitrum. And you have Ave coming or Ave coming over to uh, Metis, and then seven. I'm just bullish because I like what they're doing. But yeah, yeah, uh, that's did that's you, Maya. Did you did you mention anything about Vitalik's mom owning this? Vitalik's this mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot that one. Vitalik's yeah. mom. Yeah. I mean, think about it. They they also have a, a lot of funding as well um, to to back this chain and. It's very bullish to me as well. And looking at this, I got into uh, the DeFi, uh, you know, for Metis back in the day, aka a year and a half ago, <laughs> back in the day. Nice. Um, but yeah, I got in there and then I got into a, um, I think it was Starstream. Have you heard of that one? No idea what it is. Yep, I've it, heard got of like Hummus, it got hacked. Net Swap and those guys, but yeah, yeah. So I, I did, you know, did pretty well with that. Um, with just collecting stars and all that, and that's what the token was. And literally, I took my money, got out in probably like two, three weeks, and uh, basically left because you know the 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 bear cycle kind of set in, and uh, that's when I sold every my, my entire bag. But I, I looked at that, and uh, I think months later, the stars token just tanked, uh, and I was wondering what's going on, and found out that it was hacked, and it was a uh, potentially a rug and the team was saying oh no it wasn't a rug and yeah so that was <laughs> that was my exposure with metis and that ecosystem but one thing i wanted to say as well just to kind of cap the the metis uh bullishness is that the total supply right now that's out is that was uh according to coin market cap uh is the is 5.4 million tokens get this max supply 10 million tokens right that's that's like nothing it's less than btc Bullish. It's, it's going to be very, ten thousand dollars. I love, I love a good, I love a good uh, token that's 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 literally less than, you know, a hundred million. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. If it's less than that, I'm even more bullish. Dude, um, you love Maya. Then it's only got one hundred eighty k. Oh yes, uh, I would like that. Yeah, I need to look into that as well. But um, yeah, it's having this less of a token supply is is pretty massive. Um, and it's used as gas, so uh, I don't know. It's it's there's a lot there's a lot of positives. The previous all time high that I'm looking at for Metis, I think it was around 300 or is it 400? Dude, that's sorry, nuts. 323. I remember that. I can't believe yeah. it was so high. Mm -hmm. It's like 28 bucks. Like 28 dollars. 28 dollars. I would say just like get get five of these tokens, get ten of these tokens, and just stow it away. Hold on to it. Um, because one day it potentially could be above a thousand dollars for it's one. I, I don't mom. know. It's Vitalik's mom's project, <laughs> and this is not a lie. Like this is for, this is real. <laughs> so you can do your DD and try to you know see if this is true and what we're you know spot checking what we're saying. But guys, it's bullish. It's the ultimate it's... meme. It's the ultimate <laughs> meme. Guys, crypto runs in narratives. It has a really good meme. Um, <laughs> like yeah, it, it's it's just like a coffee money play. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I actually do like Maya. Uh, Maya, I put that on my public D bank wallet. That was like the last one. I mean, in my opinion, it's like a no brainer. 
it, it's basically trading at uh, what its treasury holds and there's no more token emissions. So it's like, okay, well, downside, okay, well, if it goes down, I mean, obviously it could go to zero, but upside, it's like, okay, well, I mean, if the treasury is successful, we hit a bull market, um, it, it has a lot of hype, uh, it's a lower market cap coin, it's like, okay, uh, I could see this narrative uh, getting some love. Same thing like Hermes and Tethys. Tethys is just like a, a GMX fork that's over on Metis. Um, and speaking of GMX forks, those are like the stable coins of the day right now. Uh, the perp dexes, you got GMX, you got level finance. Those guys are basically just like stable coins. <laughs> they stay um, in between a certain price range. Like the price range for level has been trading between like 650 and I don't know, eight bucks. GMX has been trading between what? Uh, 70 bucks, 80 bucks or 65 bucks to 80 bucks. So it's like bear market, bull market, those, those guys are still going to do their thing. Uh, traders like volatility. So, I mean, in a bull market, okay, the perp taxes are going to get a lot of trading volume. In a bear market, okay, they're going to get a lot of trading volume because there's volatility. What those perp taxes are not the best for is, I mean, I don't know, it depends, is if the market is sideways. And... The reason why I say it depends is because usually when Bitcoin and ETH are sideways, altcoins pump. So those are altcoins. So in theory, it's kind of like maybe they do pump. And that, that's, that's also why I like FXS, um, or I'm sorry, FPIS. Uh, basically, the, the thesis on this is bull market, altcoin does well. Bear market, uh, high inflation, FPI goes way up uh, so, because it's... It, it's based on the um, inflation data. So if inflation goes up, the token goes up because the, the pools rebalance, the cost of goods go up. So the quote unquote stable coin goes up. So that, that was just kind of like the thesis on it, but who knows? We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Uh, at and, the time, and I like Sam. <laughs> at the time we were, we we're just kind of talking right now. BTC has broke uh, $29,000. ETH is at eighteen ninety, well, almost close to eighteen ninety. Nice. I bought twenty dollars of it this morning. Of BTC? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know, dude. I was pretty hyped. Was right before this podcast, I was like, "I'm doing bucks. it." I was I was on strike, and I was like, "I got like twenty bucks to spend. I'm buying." Yeah, I know. I noticed that uh, the the dominance of BTC was just kind of going off. It broke the resistance the overhead resistance and is actually trekking its way towards the 49 percent oh I think. no yeah That's so that means all th so I'm not sure yeah exactly for those who do not know dominance for btc goes up all coins will typically bleed or trade sideways uh, because everyone's all excited about BTC and that's, you know, it helps with the price pump and all that but once the dominance goes down we then see a nice surge yeah but that was that was the triple that. top though like it, if it broke the triple top, that means whew, yeah, it's, it's big. This is big. This is I mean, a, that means big Bitcoin dude. dominance is going to scream, and altcoins are going to get wrecked. Yep. I, I mean, select select altcoins will do well. Like I think um, the Kava ecosystem because they just have cash flowing in. Uh, same thing with uh, zk sync ecosystem. They just got cash coming in. I think it's going to be still bullish for them. But look, the other the way, guys, look out below. The way the way I look at it is that. Hey, I want BTC to run because then it gives you a nice little trigger point. Say, hey, I'm going to sit up now and I'm going to try to pick my points on which altcoin to buy. And because that's going to happen eventually. Once BTC falls down, you know, it crashes or, or you know, um, corrects, that's when the alt will go off. So I'm more than happy for BTC go, to go off. Uh, I'm looking at the dominance. The next levels would be uh, 49%. And if it breaks that psychological 50%, we're looking at I'm well I see I see 57 56% dominance for BTC. And Dude, this this, will... this reminds I wasn't around then but um uh -huh. look at the chart uh, you're you're a TA guy. Go yes. back and look in uh, 2019. I'm this on it. reminds me uh this move that we're seeing is similar to what's going on on uh, Bitcoin. Back in 2019 we literally had the scream up from it was a low, this was, I'm looking at December 2019. We dumped to like 6K and then we pumped all the way up to like uh, 10K. And then we had that 2020 dump. 
I feel like we're going to do that. Uh, we're, we're obviously, I, I feel we have to see some lower lows, but like, I feel we're going to have a run up similar to like the 6k to uh, 10k move. Actually, it was probably a little bit less than that. Um, and then we had that inevitable dump. Um, but I, I, I feel like we're going to see somewhat of a move uh, and then have that ret- retrace. I don't know. Yeah, probably. I mean, we, the BTC price, we can. It's so it's so young in terms of like broader markets. Is that it's it's too young to to kind I, of. I'm look I'm at sorry. Pattern. I'm sorry. Um, I went to 2019. I meant 2018. 2018. So yeah. in 2018, after we collapsed from the 20k pump, we went down to like 3k, and then we rose up all the way to uh, 13,970. So basically 14k, and then we slowly bled out and bled and then 2020 we dumped yeah i'll, I'll do a screenshot um so people know what i'm well, talking the, about the 20, on the, the, the chat the 20, or on the stream yeah the 2020 dump was just primarily because of the covid dump which was just a crazy anomaly obviously that hasn't happened but a lot of folks got scared and spooked out um not me though i picked up a btc during that little dump <laughs> i didn't <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun for me because I really I, had to, I was I was a uh, spring chicken yeah. then. I ended up buying like I I I looked at crypto but I never bought any. I was just looking around, playing around. I just had my big. I had my uh, Warren Buffett hat on when the COVID crash was happening. Literally happened for 3 to 2 hours. I think it was maybe like 2 hours. Everyone was all screaming and just I just saw red candle, red candle, red candle. All the way down to like $3,000 or around 3500. And I managed to scoop one around 40 two hundred dollars or forty one hundred dollars man that was awesome <laughs> i was so happy with that move because obviously it's the warren buffett move when i say that is because he's always like oh buy when there's blood in the streets and uh you know sell when there's completely you know there's greed across the board so it's another way of playing it obviously it's but this is i think this is positive for btc this is positive for crypto i love i love i, I want btc to go to oblivion right um, so this is this. I, wait, you don't want it to go to an oblivion. Oblivion's bad. <laughs> I own BTC. Moon. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> moon, I'm happy moon. <laughs> so I'm kidding. Eventually, I'm kidding. Yeah, you can get some more. You can get some more in an oblivion. But think about it though. If the dominance goes up to that 57 mark, because that's the heaviest resistance that I see, besides that 50 percent, um, you know, psychological level. If it passes that 50 percent. That that would put BTC like, uh, and I'm just gonna throw it out there. It could be around like the 40s, if the dominance is. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, so take a look at this. I just sent you over a screenshot of the chart. Um, yep. You see, I feel like we're at the back in 2019 stage yeah. of where we're trading around $7,900, and then the next peak is going to be around 1,400. So that move is about another. I don't know. Um, like I could see Bitcoin going up to. 54, 55K, whatever, um, just based on the move. I think it would be less. So I think 50K would be like the sign. And then we retrace and go back to 2020 lows of like 3K. Uh, oh, co- no, not 2020 lows of 3K, but repeating 2020 to where we go to lows. I think the lowest we'll see is going to be around 10K, maybe 12K. Um, but like, I, I feel like we're going to have a quote unquote small eco bubble. Is what people call it, but whatever. But speaking, yeah, I mean, it's bullish. Yeah. Speaking of um, other narratives and uh, predicting, not predicting, but thinking about what's going to happen in the future. Two chains that I'm looking at, and two that I just feel haven't gotten enough love yet, are going to be CFX and Thor Swa- or Thor Chain. I mean, we're gonna have a rune season eventually. I feel like it, man. It, it, it's boiling, dude. It's like been consolidating for several months. I got my rune bag ready. I'm, I'm ready to go. I could see, I could see it happening, man. Uh, the TVL seems to be doing pretty well over there, and I think if we get a nice bull market, I think it'll get some love. It's, a, it's really the only way to get native Bitcoin without an exchange. Very and then CFX China narrative. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that's. See, in fact, that's all I've been hearing about the China narrative. It's I gotta look into it more, actually. On Dude, my coin end. flux is a G man. Don't sleep on them. They got a couple of altcoins that are fun over there. Um, like the altcoins that I like over there that I'm messing with is ABC. Um, 
What's the other one? ABC Goal, like goalie. Uh, it's basically a lending protocol over there. Goal, it, it's fame. It, it's crazy. Um, it's literally like Geist. You get like oh, okay. fifteen. You get like fifteen thousand percent APR for locking up, and then the token like goes to zero, so it's like not worth anything. Well, the token's <laughs> actually holding up well, so just be careful locking it up, though. Um, <laughs> I remember this with Geist. It was trading at like forty bucks, and after the three month lock, it was at like two cents. Um, so be careful with that. And then the other one is nut. <laughs> yeah, you gotta lock up the nuts, it says. Um, it's spelled it's, nuts? It's, it's nut. N-U-T. Oh. It's Nucleon Governance Token. Nut. <laughs> so, good coin. <laughs> yeah, we'll so see. that's solid, man. And I wanted to bring up one thing, too, was the idea with Injective. Do you know anything about Injective? Yeah, dude. I remember Injective. I met with the dude over in uh, at East Denver. It was like a year, two years ago. No, it was a year ago. Um, I can't remember his name, but he's he's young. Um, I think it will do well. It's got a very strong narrative. He told me, uh, "Just be ready. Grab a bag. Um, we're gonna." Basically, it was like they're gonna be pumping the chain. Um, I never grabbed a bag. Uh, I, I do <laughs> like the narrative. I like what they're doing. Um, I just, I got enough plays elsewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one of those things. I'll, I'll fade that narrative um, and watch it just go to the moon. Uh, I just, I didn't get the right vibes. Yeah. That's so all. yeah, and I, I just, I just been hearing a lot of chatter about it. Um, just kind of here and there, not all over the place, because you know how crypto Twitter is, but. Uh, injective is just for the folks that don't know what it is. It's basically this open inter interoperable layer one blockchain. Uh, yes, another L one, <laughs> uh, building on you know powerful DeFi Wait, applications. What? Yeah, man, L ones, <laughs> and it's just basically trying to you know compete with other L ones, obviously. And and uh, right now, as 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 we speak, uh, the injective ecosystem only has two applications. Um, one is Helix, and I think it's a trading platform, so it looks actually pretty cool. I actually went on there yesterday um, to try you know, to check it out, and it looks pretty nice, actually. The TVL on that one is uh, 12 million, and uh, it has Astroport on there. Astroport, the, it's, this was a, a dApp that was actually on Terra's, you know, the Terra station, and not Terra station, Terra ecosystem. And now it's it's there. It's here. It's here with uh, Astroport. It looks like it merged onto three different chains from there. Terra, Injective, and Terra Classic. So this is like the first legit chain that Astroport went onto. Very interesting stuff. Uh, and that, and the, the, the TVL of this ecosystem is around 15 to $16 million. I think that... Uh, I think they potential... got liquidity incentives too. I remember that from a while ago. Yeah, that's... I mean... It's still really low. The just the TVL, the ecosystem. So obviously nothing's happening on this ecosystem at this point in time. But folks are talking about it. I looked into the investors of this, and I gotta say, Mark Cuban is an investor in Injective. Also, oh, interesting. Big time. You know, uh, the big billion dollar company. Obviously, you know, speaking of billion dollars, uh, billion dollar company uh, that. That kind of spreads their 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 wealth across a lot of these DApps in this space and a lot of these uh, ecosystem plays like L L ones and L twos is Pantera Capital, right? I did mention Pantera Capital in the past. They I think under management they they have around five to six billion dollars of uh, of of asset management across their uh, their their company. They have a they have a lot of money and Pantera Capital. Obviously, you know they 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 you're, you're going to see their name when you look at investors. To, uh, on many of these these uh, these plays, these L1s, L2s, and these applications and stuff. So, uh, so keep an eye on this one. I think this is very interesting. I think that if you get into Injective's ecosystem, if I mean, there's really nothing going on at this point in time. But check out Helix. I I'd, I wanted to see if they actually have a token or not. But um, yeah, I, there's, there's a lot. I need to dig into this a little bit more. But I think Injective is uh, people are calling for hundred dollar plus Injective and I and to per token. Um, and they actually have a max supply of a hundred million tokens, and it's yeah. All... They also do a couple token burns based on the transaction volume, so it's actually deflationary. Uh, Injective yeah. has some really interesting tokenomics. I just 
I don't know, something like vibes. Like I, I just go by vibes. Uh, mm-hmm. I, it's not vibing with me. Um, like I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> But I mean, if, if it tells me something, I, I just, I, regardless of if it pumps or not, I, I just, whatever. Uh, I mean, I, I think it'll do well. I think it'll pump. Um, I think it'll hold strong. I'm just, it's just not a narrative I'm playing. But yeah, Injective is probably going to be an extremely good play. Just like um, SMT, uh, Swarm Money Mark, or Swarm I love SMT. Uh, Market Token. I grabbed just a little bit, just in case, coffee money, just to see what <laughs> happens. Um, just in case, but it, the only reason why is just RWA exposure. Um, I don't think I'll be grabbing any allocations and in injective because I already have a lot of exposure to this narrative. Like GMX, I have Quinta. Uh, I didn't get DYDX, but I got level finance. So I, I have enough perp decks exposure. So I'm not super worried about having this exposure, but it's probably going to do well. Yeah. I, I think this is, I mean, it's sitting at a, like $5, a like little under $6 right now. Um, and who knows? I mean, I, this is one of the first few projects that I've seen that is backed by Mark Cuban. I know that he was playing around in the space. He's one of the few billionaires that actually tried to learn solidity um, in the past. Props to him. I, I love the guy. Shark Tank. <laughs> Shout out to Shark Tank. <laughs> Mark Iron <Cuban>. Finance. <laughs> Iron Finance. <laughs> but uh, it's cool to kind of see that he's backing things that he loves and supports. And um, I'm curious to see what's going to happen uh, with this injective token in the future yeah i I remember astroport on terra that thing was so hyped and it was like not the best x it was horrible i think it wasn't that swap so much better yeah it was a lot better i mean terra swap integrated the astroport price action price in there um and right when i was using terra uh i was mainly using a uh a dex called uh coin hall and that was coin hall is cool that was a lot better than than a lot of the other decks on there. Yeah, but coin that doesn't cool. matter anymore, I guess, because <laughs> it's Terra. <laughs> but but yeah, um, shall we talk about and just finish off with NFTs? What do you think? Did we talk about everything? I think we did. Yeah. Um, Kava, CFX, uh, ZK Saint, Canto. Yeah, we talked about Canto. I remember that. Canto Belief. Uh, yeah. NFTs, let's hit it. Yeah, just really nothing to um, kind of, you know, shocking or at all. But obviously, Yuga Labs, very bullish on Yuga Labs. They they actually had a, a little nice uh, event last week on the 5th or the 6th of April. Um, you were basically able to, to decouple your coda to your land deed. So your other side deed. And this was cool because... Oh, did you get your Gen Z? My what? Your Jimsy. It's it's a free airdrop. Like if you use Jim, um, just oh, go claim no. it. It's worth like 0.05 ETH. So it's free. Oh. So if you ever use Jim, go mint your NFT. Um, I I was yeah, it's minting right now. I, I forgot to mention that. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah, yeah drop me a the, link. I think the mint ends in like a day or something. Awesome. So I'll take a look. I did use it once or twice in the past, but I'm not sure about. Yeah, I'll I'll drop a link uh, to you and I'll drop it in the um, video. So anyone watching this want to go get their Jimsy, go get nice. it. Nice. Go sell nice. it for point oh five ETH. It's like a hundred bucks. No, that's more. Well, with ETH pumping, we're at twenty nine three hundred for BTC at this point. ETH is at yeah, it's like a hundred bucks. It's like a hundred bucks. That's awesome. Yeah. So really, yeah, it's the fact that you're able to decouple your um, your other land deeds, other side. Other deed land deeds, it's it's a tongue twister. But the the folks that actually had a coda that was in their land deed were able to uh, decouple it and basically submit their. Which I kind of make the exchange, right? You extract your 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 coda from your land deeds, and the coda is actually it's a standalone NFT that look they look insane. I'm not sure you look at these these codas before, but they look awesome. The art on this is is top notch. I. I Dude, if it, I, I if it, it ain't a potato <laughs> or a sappy seal or a pudgy penguin, I'm not interested. <laughs> Understood. Noted. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The TLDR, I'm not an NFT guy. I'm just here to learn as much as I can. Listen, I'm trying to make some type of money, passive income, when it comes to NFTs and games. And I think 
Yuga is going to accomplish that eventually, right? Because we don't know. I, I agree. They they have such a huge IP, man. That's massive. Yeah. yeah. So I bought. I picked up last week. A I, uh, I did some nice little trades with uh, with Rio and SMT and MPX uh, because they pumped a little bit. Um, so I took some profits there and I rolled it over to some some Yuga assets. Um, I did buy a few of those vessels that's out right now. That's sitting at a floor of point three. Um, I did pick up a land deed around, uh, I think it was around 2.4 ETH. This land deed is, has a an artifact on them and, and a, a, a couple of these resources that I can probably potentially mine. Um, I think that, you know, once I once I be able to sell off, and this is my thesis, when I buy these land deeds, I think that since the artifacts are so rare, like they're rare because it's 100,000 supply for these land deeds, and I think around 20% of that supply has an artifact that's attached to their land deed. So once the artifact is able to decouple and I'm able to take that, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to pick up or sell these these at artifact if I don't want it. Um, eventually for you know multiple ETH or maybe an ETH, then I'll make back my uh, initial investment for this um, this land deed. So. Yeah, uh, it's it's a nice it's it's awesome to look at. The art is awesome on there, and and I'm really excited about their um, their eventual game that you know that they're going to roll out sometime soon. When I say soon, maybe a year. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and, also, and make announcement of announcement bullish. <laughs> yeah, they have the money for. It. And also another thing to say too is that they recently um, uh, hired a uh, the C. I think it was a CTO. Chief Technology Officer over, or is it the COO? Anyways, he so Yuga hired an executive over on Activision Blizzard, is who is now their Yuga Labs uh, CEO. So Bullish. he's gonna he's gonna be running the operation, the day to day. It's um, obviously the, he's got a lot of uh, connections in this space. He's going to lead the forefront of this gaming, and he knows games. Obviously, it's Activision. Right, Call of Duty and all that stuff, but um, yeah, very very bullish on Yuga. Still, they keep bolstering their team with just A plus, you know, folks. Um, their their rollouts have been seamless. There's no complaints on the, how they're rolling some new collections out. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot to talk about with Yuga, and uh, it's just really really cool. Last week as well, um, I picked up another V1 Punk. I'm excited about that one as well. Obviously, I took that. boy, how's minute. the price doing on it? It's the same. It's around four point eight. Is the floor? Dude, you're pumping I believe. it. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, I like the you know this is gonna be a long term bag. It's in my ledger. It's just gonna sit there for a long time. But it's main. It's I'm using these NFTs that I think that it's very good. It's, it's a good possibility for them to at least double or something like that. Um, because you obviously heard about my my thesis with V1 versus V2 punks. Um, and you know, V2 punks is out there. It's at trading at 65 ETH floor. These V1 punks are sitting at 4.8, 4.7 ETH floor. There's a huge discrepancy there, given that V1 punks were the original first NFTs out there. Um, and one thing, one one fact here is is to, to note here is that uh, the first thousand crypto punks for these V1s, guess who owns it? I don't know. Yuga. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. So well, they, Yuga they owns own everything. They own everything. They have their hands. Dude, I'm everything. telling you, CFX is the rotator. Literally, as we're speaking on here, 30 minutes later, or like oh, yeah? 10 minutes later, Nut, ABC, and Goal up 30%. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. Yeah, and so yeah, I'm done with NFTs. It's still really, really bullish. But the last thing I wanted to say too, we kind of skipped over this, and I just realized this now is POWs, right? Proof of work oh, token. Proof of work. I told you we forgot one. Bubble yes, popped. last Good call. The last time we talked about this, the bubble popped, right? And I said that I think that there's big signs that the bubble popped. Nexo was at you know all time highs in the four thousands. It went up to like forty four, forty five hundred per Nexo token. Uh, you you looked at um. Uh, Caspa, that one went up to basically four, four and a half cents. Yeah, they're all down like twenty five percent. I mean, they're yeah. they're starting to retrace, but yeah, they they got a they got yeah hammered. Yeah, so I was I was pretty happy that uh, TA worked on my side here, and I sold basically near top, and it retraced from top to bottom, 
uh, around 52% for Nexa. And Caspa, not so much. I think it went down like about 30% or so. Yeah, Caspa is like Bitcoin and proof of work. It's yeah, like 30, 34, 35% Caspa it, went down. It, it's, it's basically the barometer for it. If it goes down, the other guys go down like massively. Yeah. So, I, yeah, obviously we're going to see these kind of take off again eventually sometime. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, my, my, uh, my ideas of, of just kind of throwing out there saying, I think the bubble popped last week and it did pop and I'm happy that it worked. I'm hoping that people took that and said, okay, well, let's, let's just see what abs has to say. If he's wrong, let's just scrutinize him. All right. But <laughs> if he's right, Ooh. cool. Awesome. Next episode. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool just to kind of throw ideas and, and kind of seeing that, uh, these POWs are gonna, it's in a different sector, right? Like we, you, these rotations, like what's the next rotation? It might be CFX. You said, I'm telling right? you, man, the next, the next narrative, when we come back on, I don't know, like a month from now, we're going to look back and be like, man, Kava is cool. We're going to look back and be like rune. Wow. That's a thing. And then we're going <laughs> to look back at CFX and we're going to be like, wow. The China narrative is real. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's it's really fun space to to be in right now. Um, lots of lots of moving parts, and um, yeah, let us know if you guys have any type of questions or any tokens you guys want us to kind of break down for you. Happy to take a look. Uh, again, please you know like, subscribe, and you know all of the above for us. It really helps out the channel. Um, yeah, Drake. Any uh, anything else before we hit hit them with the one liner? Bro, <laughs> dude, it's the ultimate meme, man. It is. Um, but yeah, no. Let's hit him with the wisdom one liner. Probably got enough of me talking. Proverbs chapter eleven, verses sixteen. A kind-hearted woman gains honor, but a ruthless man gains only wealth. What's more important, honor or wealth? It's a rhetorical question. Have fun with that. (laughs) Nice. Nice one. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining. We'll talk to you soon.